megadose vitamin therapy, viral infection, and post-viral illness. Research has demonstrated benefits from four vitamins, niacin or B3, thiamine or B1, vitamin C, and vitamin D. First of all, viral infection has been shown to deplete the active form of niacin, vitamin B3, via several different mechanisms. To be used in the body, niacin needs to be activated into a molecule called NAD. NAD is extremely important for a lot of different processes, but especially in the production of cellular energy. It's also involved in the expression of specific genes, and is very important for protecting the cell against oxidative stress. The requirement for this vital molecule increases greatly during viral infection. One reason for this is that oxidative stress caused by the infection activates specific enzymes which enhance the turnover and the depletion of NAD. Furthermore, the hyperinflammatory response, which occurs in some people, also places a burden on NAD stores. And because of NAD's roles in gene expression, this can quickly lead to reduced expression of genes involved in combating inflammation. It also produces a depletion of cellular energy, and this eventually results in cell death. Now, as a backup route to replenish NAD, because it is so essential, the body will use an amino acid called tryptophan. However, tryptophan is usually going to be used to make serotonin and melatonin. Therefore, a consequence of this is that serotonin and melatonin synthesis slows right down whilst the body is desperately trying to replete NAD using what little tryptophan it has left. Interestingly, some researchers have highlighted that many of the symptoms of post-viral illness are practically identical to classical deficiency of niacin. This condition is otherwise known as pellagra. Now, anecdotally, many people with post-viral illness benefit greatly from niacin supplementation in fairly high doses. For active infection, some research using different forms of niacin has also shown promising results when paired with other treatments. Looking more into how viral infection can cause inflammation, it's known to stimulate the release of pro-inflammatory chemicals by T-cells in the immune system. When left unchecked, these chemicals contribute to what is known as the cytokine storm, where uncontrolled inflammation leads to irreparable tissue destruction and is often the cause of death. And here, large, large doses of one of the other B vitamins, thiamine, can prevent the release of these pro-inflammatory chemicals, and this ultimately acts to calm down inflammation. Thiamine can help to maintain the consistent production of energy in cells and attenuate what's called lactic acidosis. It may also improve the transfer of oxygen in the blood and in the cells, and is essential for the control of the autonomic nervous system. Like niacin, the high metabolic demand of infection can quickly deplete this B vitamin, and unfortunately, sometimes death is caused by the complications of a thiamine deficiency rather than the virus. Viral infection in its most severe form has been associated with a condition called encephalopathy, and this is a classic symptom of a severe thiamine depletion. In this study, they administered megadoses of B1, and remarkably, they found that 75% of participants showed resolution in neurological symptoms. A different report evaluating thiamine's role as an adjunctive therapy demonstrated reduced mortality and lower blood clotting at just 100 milligrams per day. Also, unlike niacin, many symptoms of post-viral illness are remarkably similar to classical thiamine deficiency. Likewise, anecdotal evidence suggests that many witness major improvements when they supplement with thiamine in high doses after recovering from viral infections. Unsurprisingly, thiamine plays a central role in the Math Plus protocol for viral infection and so does the antioxidant vitamin C. 
The primary mechanism of action in viral infection is vascular inflammation and oxidative stress. The antioxidant system is therefore the body's main line of defense and very quickly the stores of vitamin C can become exhausted. Therapeutic intervention with vitamin C has been shown to protect and restore the integrity to the blood vessel lining, directly inhibit inflammation, and also serve to enhance the production of antiviral substances such as type 1 interferon. At this point, there are over 20 studies showing benefits in using vitamin C in both early and late stage infection, along with numerous other case reports. However, no other vitamin has been studied as heavily as vitamin D. With upwards of 75 studies looking at sufficiency, where they're assessing outcomes of infection based on levels in the blood. Furthermore, more than 38 studies have looked at direct treatment intervention with vitamin D, showing an average of 44% improvement across the board. We briefly examined how viral infection can drive inflammation, where there is this massive release of pro-inflammatory chemicals by immune cells, and they go on to cause massive amounts of damage to our own tissues. In many cases, it's this hyper-inflammatory response or this hyper-immune activation which is the cause of death. And while many of these exact immune cells actually have receptor sites for vitamin D, vitamin D serves to modulate their activity. Vitamin D has been shown to suppress the cells which drive inflammation and increase the production of anti-inflammatory chemicals which achieve the opposite effect. This translates to greater control of the immune response, the control which we lose in vitamin D deficiency, and this is one of the reasons why deficiency is associated with worse outcomes. Its overall effect is to dampen the immune response and reduce inflammation. Two primary mechanisms of viral illness involve inflammation and dysfunction of the blood vessels along with activation of a hormonal circuit called the renin-angiotensin-aldosterone system. And it turns out that vitamin D has been shown to effectively counteract both. Furthermore, vitamin D can also enhance our own antiviral defenses, reducing viral replication and boosting our immunity. Doses in studies have ranged from a few thousand to up to 400,000 IU. So we very quickly looked at four vitamins which can come in handy if someone does have viral infection, but also if someone is suffering from post-viral symptoms, there are many who've used these therapies with a great benefit.